Hey everyone, so this is gonna be a quick intro to using the MyPy type checker to type check your Python 3 programs. Um, if you're wondering, type checking in Python, um, it's, it's kind of a, a big deal right now. A lot of people are talking about how this could potentially be the future of the language. And just to give you a feel of, of you know, what type checking is actually good for. So this is a new feature that was added in Python 3.5. And what it allows you to do is um, let's say we write a simple function. Um, let's call it add this, and we just give it two arguments a and b, and it's going to return a plus b, right? So in kind of stock Python, we don't really have a good idea of what the types are that this function deals with, and then also what the return, the type of the return value is going to be. I mean, you could imagine that can call this with uh, two strings. And I can also call this with two integers. And I could call it with a bunch more things and some of them might not even make a lot of sense. So what type hinting does now is it allows me to specify the expected types for these arguments and then also for this function. So I can say, okay, you know, I expect these two arguments to be integers. And then I expect this function to also return an integer. And uh, the way this works is that these guys here, these type annotations, they are um, a syntax extension that was added to Python 3.5. So this is not going to work in older versions of Python. Uh, there's a way to do that in Python 2 as well. Uh, and it, it involves, uh, I think it works with uh, some, some uh, comment syntax or basically putting the, these annotations into comments. You can look that up on your own. Um, let's, for now, let's focus on the Python 3 syntax. And basically what these type hints allow me to do is like specify the, yeah, like I said, the expected types for these arguments and also the expected return type. So right now, when you look at this, um, it doesn't actually guarantee that this function can really handle these argument types. It's just a type hint, or it's just these three type hints. And, um, you know, I could just do this, where I just force this function to return a string, and uh, it wouldn't really be an error, right? Like, matter of fact, if I save this, and then just run it through the, um, the Python interpreter. Uh, let's actually <laughs> probably call this um, and call this function. Then the program still works, even though it doesn't really follow this uh, contract for, for the types that we gave it. Now, the way that types are going to be working in Python is that they're just type hints. And then you need an external program, uh, almost like a linter. That it's called a type checker. And you would need that type checker program to actually look at your program code and then give you feedback on whether or not um, your program code actually follows the, the type annotations, right? So in this case, uh, this function would be violating its type annotations. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you now how you can actually run a type checker on this program. So a really popular type checker right now um, is MyPy. So let's install that for a second. Uh, pip install mypy.lang. You want to make sure you install uh, pi, pi, uh, mypy-lang uh, MyPy because just mypy without the dash lang is something else entirely. So we're not going to be happy with that. Cool. So let's install mypy. It's going to take a second here. Okay, great. And now what I'm going to do is just run mypy on my types example.py. Cool. And we actually got an error message here. Um, which is great, right? Because we, we knew that our program was, wasn't valid um, in the sense that it was following the type annotations. And so here, mypy tells us uh, types example of pi in function at this incompatible return value type 
got, got stir expected int. And this is pretty much exactly what we're saying here, right? And so we can fix that by changing it so it returns an int, right? Like we could either do something like that where we hard code it and that would cause the type checker to pass or we could, well, actually make it do something useful, um, like return the sum of these two. And then that would still pass. And you could see that, you know, having this uh, A plus B as the return value is actually a little bit more complicated than just saying return 23, because it's kind of easy for, for MyPy to figure out that 23 is an integer constant. But when you do actually, when you actually do something like A plus B, then MyPy has to go and check the type of A and check the type of B, and then actually figure out that if you add these two, you end up with an integer as well. So therefore, the, the type pins um, are accurate and we don't get uh, a type error. Um, so you can imagine that this technique can be scaled quite well, and it actually already goes far beyond just that little experiment that I showed you, right? Because, you know, if you look at this, like this wouldn't be really interesting. It, where it gets interesting is when you have thousands and hundreds of thousands of lines of code or millions of lines of code, and you can use a tool like MyPy to actually find, find some um, really big bugs that were previously undetected. The type hinting stuff is going to get more valuable as you have more and more code and as you, you're able to kind of automatically find uh, bugs that would be really hard to detect for a human in a, in a ginormous code base, right? And kind of the make or break thing for this to work is having these type hints already, already there for, let's say, large parts of the Python standard library or third-party libraries. And so, you know, just to give you an example, like let's say I import the random module and um, I'm going to change my add this function to do something terrible, which is um, we're going to go and just make it return a random integer between A and B. So now this still type checks cleanly which means that MyPy actually understands that random rand int returns an integer. And, and you know, it, it seems like really, really straightforward for um, a human because we have the, the Python docs and we kind of, you know, we're told this thing returns a random integer in range A, B. But um, in a lot of cases, like in some cases, MyPy might be able to infer that type and just figure it out on its own. But in a lot of cases, it's going to depend on people adding these type hints to functions in the um, in the Python standard library and also in uh, other third party libraries. So like a big bulk of the work is is not just writing the type checker, which is, you know, difficult enough. Um, it's a big project, but also like a big bulk of the work is adding these type hints everywhere so that MyPy and other, ty other type checkers can be as effective as possible. Because if, they, if, if a type checker doesn't know what the, the types are you're dealing with, it doesn't really add a lot of value, right? It could still function as like a basic linter, but it gets really interesting when you have all of these type checks. So there's a big project right now. It's, uh, I believe it's called the Type Shed Project, where people add these annotation to annotations to um, the standard library to cover kind of as much of that as possible. And then also people are starting to incorporate third-party libraries like Django and kind of the big popular ones. And so, well, kind of how can I wrap this up, right? So because this was just meant to be as a, as a small like intro video. So I, I think I see a lot of power in, in uh, just having the possibility to, to do type, type checking in Python. Because, because like I said in the beginning, it's gonna enable a lot more use cases for Python as a language, which I think is awesome. Um, and on the other hand, it's gonna take a lot of work before this is really gonna work seamlessly, right? Because if you do this stuff like that in, in a statically typed language like Java, then um, you're gonna have to provide these types like from the get-go, right? So there never was a Java that didn't already have all of these types. And that's why the compiler can work with it and can give you all this, this helpful feedback. But for Python, it's kind of the unique challenge is that the type checking stuff is gonna be bolted on to Python 
And so now we're, we're in the situation where you can already use this on a, on a small scale, like for small programs, but it's going to take a little bit more time before actually all of the, you know, all of the other code is going to be covered well with type hints. So you can actually really use this on a larger code base without actually getting uh, tons of warnings and errors that, that aren't real errors that, that just, you know, happen because the type hints are missing or are ambiguous. So all in all, I think this is going to be a really interesting uh, direction Python is going into. And, you know, if you're interested in this stuff today or like now is probably a good time to get into it because then you're going to be at the forefront of um, this new language feature.